Burning Oak Studios has partnered with Artsy Magazine to bring you exclusive coverage of the arts. Welcome to another edition of Art C Live. I'm Greg Shelnut, your guest host. I'm the chair of the art department at Clemson University. And we're lucky enough today to be here in the studio of John Acorn, noted sculptor of South Carolina. Good to see you, John. And John's gonna to talk to us about his work, his studio practice, and how it is just being an artist in the upstate. So, uh, John, tell us about some pieces you got around. Well, I have uh, probably uh, too many pieces. I should find some other place to put them, I guess. <laughs> But this is a That's very the sculptor's problem. Right. Before. This is a very recent one. Um, I've done a whole series, and I'm still working on them. I keep thinking uh, in six months or in a year I'll be finished with them. But they're works that are based upon a very simple shape or form of a pistol. And so this one that we're looking at here is is called a uh, charm bracelet of pistols, and uh, the. The idea for it was very simple. Uh, my granddaughter Mary was having a birthday, and so I went to select a present for her, and I saw charm bracelets. And I looked at those charm bracelets, and of course I purchased one for her for her birthday, but when I saw them I said, man, this is good material for me to take my sort of pistol theme and make a charm bracelet of pistols. So that's what you see here, and it's a variety of images with a pistol of pistols. Uh, this well, one is... thing I noticed looking at the piece, I see some of the, uh, the idea that the, the clips, that kind of the carabiners that come on and off. You know, that's the issue of the charm bracelet is the interchangeable pieces. Do you imagine someone uh, taking away, adding to this piece and, you know, as it's on exhibit? Uh, I, no, but, I know. but that's an interesting idea. That, that's a good thought. Uh, I actually sort of planned where the pieces go. And these are like the little glass sort of things that are on it. They're just a the little beads. piece of glass. Yeah. Beads, yeah. right? This sort of like the glass beads. And then these are the objects. But I really have a, I actually have set up a diagram for if and when anyone would like to exhibit any of this kind of work, there'll be a, you know, a little guide to go by because there is a, an, an order in my mind as to the way these things fit. And How did you establish the gun element in the work? I mean, what, 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 what brought that up? Uh, it's probably a long story, but I've used, uh, I've used a lot of cutouts. In one I saw it in, um, in a newspaper. It's like, it's, a, it's a rather benign. Right. I didn't want it to be a frightening image. I wanted it to, to, to be a rather pleasant. It's, it's almost like the one that kids use to put a rubber band on it. Right. And shoot the rubber band. So, so it's not uh, uh, as threatening as it could be. You know, maybe some of that innocuousness of the, of the shape in a way creates that, uh, an entryway for people to uh, uh, access the work. So somebody who's a gun collector can see something here. Somebody who you know, has that reference of a child's toy can see something here. And it, it sort of draws people. I mean, is that one of your goals, I'd assume, is to draw as many people into the work as you can? Oh, of course. You know, I, I, you know if, I could, if I could have an exhibition of all of them in a, in a Walmart or some other big box store or something like that, I'd go for it. That would be These great. do not yeah. necessarily have to be museum-oriented, but that's probably, uh, if I can find the right, the right spaces, uh, an alternative space that's maybe non-museum would also work well for me because they would be in an environment that the work could be shared by all people, not just people who go to museums. I've always been interested. These guys right here, these, yes, were, these, these were cut the yesterday, right? Okay, fresh so, art. Right, so they're cut out of a, you know, uh, out of a cabinet grade plywood. Okay. So they're, they're pretty solid. Every once in a while you find a little hole in them, but they're pretty good stuff. And th so they're, each one is cut out individually. Okay. So I've cut out thousands and thousands. And then any, there's any simply... guesstimate of how many you've cut over the year? It must be. Oh, gee, what's your, any rough estimate of how many guns you've cut? Oh, uh, I would say I'm probably pushing 10,000. Wow. Uh, that's, that's what I, I'd estimate by the number of pieces. Yeah. I don't know how many pieces are in the, uh, uh, this is a pendant of pistols. 
Okay. So it's as if it would be worn around your neck. And so the chains, the chains are covered up there with the rags to keep the, the, the paint off of them. But eventually in an exhibition, it would hang just like this, but there'd be a lot more chain. So the chain that would go around your neck would be the support system. And if the ceiling was high enough, it'd go all the way up. If not, it would just drip back down again, giving an indication that this is something that you would wear around your neck. Right. Um, but before I forget, I mean, this bandsaw is a really marvelous piece. I, I, was, I, I just admire the, the sheer look of the thing. It's yeah. a great piece. And it's, this is where all these are cut, right? This is where right, it all happens. Right, yep. Happens there, and then they, get a, then they get the edge finished on another sander. And then, actually, we discovered hand sanding the edge to soften it is the only way to go. And so it's, uh, it takes, uh, I figured it out one day from... The piece of raw piece of wood to the finished piece, each one of these takes eight minutes. That's pretty quick, though. Well, all told, but that's I don't know, when it ends you, up. When, when you take eight minutes times 10,000, time, or times a thousand, you got a lot of minutes going for you. That's true. That's pretty impressive.